Hi, I'm Dr. Warner of Warner Orthopedics and Wellness in Baton Rouge. And I wanted to talk to you today about a topic that's probably on a lot of people's minds in the United States, knee arthritis. Why? Because this is one of the most common conditions there is, and one of the most common reasons people go to see the physician. And also, knee replacement surgery is projected to be astronomically increased in numbers as the population ages. So let's talk about the knee, and let's talk about knee arthritis. So what is the knee? <clears throat> the knee is basically a joint in your lower leg that is between the thigh bone or the femur and the tibia or the shin bone. And also in the leg is another little bone called the fibula and the end of the fibula down at the foot with the end of the tibia down at the foot makes what we call the ankle. The knee also incorporates a third bit of a joint between the kneecap here and the femur. If you look closely, the femur has this sort of groove right here that allows the kneecap to sort of track and stay in place. Why do we even have a kneecap, you ask? Good question. We have a kneecap because sesamoid bones, which is what a kneecap really is, a bone embedded within two tendinous structures. This is a tendon to the quadriceps muscle, and then this is a tendon to the tibia. Uh, what, a, what a sesamoid does is it basically makes a quadricep more efficient by changing the lever arm. It's all about physics. So the line of pull, the vector of force of a quad, when you tighten your thigh muscle, pulls up on this kneecap, and guess what? When you pull up on the quad, that's when you kick or swing through in your gait or straighten your leg. Well, the kneecap makes that very efficient. Unfortunately, the downside of that is when you have a massive force pulling up this way, um, the way the body works and gravity and vectors of forces in physics, you end up with a force, a resultant force that pushes in and compresses the kneecap to the femur. When you have abnormal compression and abnormal rubbing, that's when you can potentially develop wear and tear arthritis. All arthritis is, is just a breakdown of the cartilaginous surface of a joint. So each of the ends of these bones is coated in what we call cartilage. It's a type of collagen that has a very, very low um, friction coefficient, so it's extremely smooth and it allows beautiful movements in the human body. So you have a number of places the cartilage can break down. It can break down the patella, it can break down at the femur, and it can break down on the tibia. One thing that protects the tibia that you often hear about is the meniscus. The meniscus is a semicircular piece of bristle, for lack of a better term. The meniscal tissue not only cushions the knee, but also provides rotational control, sagittal control, basically stabilizes your knee, cushions it a bit, and is very highly protective of cartilage. So one thing we've learned over the years is if you take out any of the meniscus, you are basically making a self-fulfilling prophecy of arthritis come true. So we're trying more and more often to preserve the meniscal tissue. And what does that go back to? What I think is probably the best way to treat knee arthritis, if at all humanly possible, which is non-operatively. Because we know that the surgeries, although they're very good, they're very well researched and they have decent outcomes, surgery is surgery, you wanna avoid it if you can because there's always complications. And one of the ways to avoid it is physical therapy. What this model doesn't show you is all of the many muscular and fascial interconnections that connect the toe all the way up to the head and go through the knee. And there's a million different ways to make the knee feel better through targeted physical therapy, targeted stretching, fascial plane movements, myofascial releases, yoga, things like that. And then platelet-rich plasma, which I'm gonna talk about a lot on Saturday, is another way to treat this naturally. We take your blood, we process it in a certain manner and end up with a concentrated amount of platelets, a concentrated amount of white cells. And those hold all of the growth factors in these tiny little vesicles or bags within the cell called granules, alpha granules specifically. And they release a ton of things like platelet-derived growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, um, what else? Bone morphogenic proteins, a lot of cytokines that are pro-healing, a lot of anti-inflammatory proteins and cytokines. So the platelets are just wonderful natural healing components. And in fact, the first stage of all healing in the human body. And we can basically harness this power and inject it directly into your knee. A recent meta-analysis in January of this year looked at all of the recent literature of platelet-rich plasma for knee and hip arthritis and found that PRP injections are actually better than any other injections we do for short-term and potentially long-term pain relief and function improvement, which is really our goal, right? 
You don't wanna hurt and you wanna do more. So that's our job is to get you there with the least amount of trauma and the least amount of invasiveness and the least amount of risk possible. Again, knee arthritis, very common, very common, but also very treatable. Although there is no cure for arthritis, you should remember, but we can treat the symptoms very, very well now.